The Village is directed by M. Night Shyamalan and stars Bryce Dallas Howard, Joaquin Phoenix, William Hurt, Sigourney Weaver, Adrian Brody. Huge cast. In fact, it was Shyamalan's biggest cast he had ever worked with. Welcome back to my M. Night Shyamalan series, guys. I've already talked about The Sixth Sense and Unbreakable. My review of Signs, the analyzed 30 minute in-depth review has been out for a long time, so I decided to skip over that one because I really don't have anything else to talk about. And we're gonna talk now about The Village, which for some people was that first film that came out where they went, oh. Huh. And as a warning, just like my other reviews, this is going to contain spoilers, so if you've never seen the film, stay away, see the film first, then come back and watch my review, unless you don't care about spoilers, because that's what we're going to do on this video. Let me tell you guys something about me. The Village, perhaps, is my most anticipated film of all time. The only film I can think of that I'm more excited to see than I was excited to see The Village is Star Wars Episode 7 this December. So when I heard he was making another film and it was going to be another scary suspense film and it was called The Village and it looked so cool and all the trailers were so scary and terrifying and they were really pushing the suspense of these creatures in the woods, my friends and I were pumped out of our minds to see The Village. We were so excited about it. We would talk with each other about what we thought the creatures might look like, what we thought the creatures purpose was. Was. Would it be like a showdown between the villagers and the creatures? Would it be this awesome, scary, horrific film? And then it was a period piece romance. So for me and my friends, and for a lot of people who saw the film, it was a very disappointing experience. I recently heard somebody say on a review that The Village is the worst movie he had ever seen in his life. I've heard people say it's one of the worst movies ever made. I've heard people say it's so bad you can't even rewatch it. I gotta tell you, I rewatched this movie through a different perspective and it is nowhere near as bad as I remember it being, and it's also nowhere near as bad as people say. And a lot of that initial reaction being so negative is due to that marketing. When I went to Comic-Con and I saw the Visit panel with M. Night Shyamalan, one of the audience members asked him if there was something in his past with his films he could change, a regret maybe that he had, something he'd like to do over. He literally started talking about the marketing of The Village. He wished he had marketed the film correctly as a romance because too many people went to the film expecting a horrifying creature feature, and and what they got was a love story and it disappointed a lot of people. He knows. He knows that he dropped the ball on that and he's admitted that publicly and I gotta respect him for that because that is definitely the initial reason for why a lot of people hated this movie. Years later, away from that hype, away from the trailers, re-watching this movie, it's a beautifully shot film. For one, anyone who ever says this is the worst movie they've ever seen, no film lensed by the great Roger Deakins is the worst movie you've ever seen. He's my favorite cinematographer and every shot in this film is gloriously beautiful. There's so much going on in every frame from a color perspective. The shot construction is gorgeous. It's a fantastic looking movie. It's edited together so well. It flows very nicely. So this group of villagers in the 1800s are living in fear of this race of creatures that surround them in the woods. These creatures keep them at bay. They keep them from venturing out into the woods, into the towns, which according to the older villagers is a very evil and violent place. And Bryce Dallas Howard in her debut role plays a blind girl named Ivy who falls for Joaquin Phoenix. Adrian Brody plays a character who has some mental handicaps, who has a thing for Ivy, and he gets very jealous of Ivy and Lucius decides to stab Lucius in the gut and Ivy has to then venture into the woods to hopefully find medicine to bring back to save Lucius. Now this is, you know, the whole first half of the movie. There's a lot more stuff in between that. There's a lot of interesting little tidbits that happen in the first half of the movie though that I want to talk about. For one, it's kind of cool that Judy Greer and Bryce Dallas Howard Howard played sisters way before they ever played sisters in Jurassic World. The sound design for this movie is so good. The creeping, crackling sounds of the woods and the brush. It's just like really unsettling at times and it's one of the best elements of the village. James Newton Howard's score finally got an Oscar nomination, his first collaboration with Shyamalan to receive note from the Academy and it's gorgeous. The violin solos are beautiful. But there are some issues with this first half of the movie and I can't really get into them unless I talk about the twist. So as you guys probably know, know, the twist of the village is that the creatures are not actually creatures. They're village elders who are in these suits who are scaring the villagers to try to keep them there because it's actually modern day. These older villagers have moved to this place and tried to recreate olden times because so many tragedies befell them in the real world and they create this story of these creatures that live in the woods, raise their children thinking that's actually true to keep them in this place to try to keep them 
safe to preserve an older way of living. Now, when you actually say it like that, I buy it. Like, that could be a thing. You know, I could see how a bunch of older people would just be like, I'm getting out of here. Let's go to a place where we can all be safe and keep our children safe, and we'll create this story to scare them from going any further. There's a lot of social commentary there, and that's definitely something a lot of people miss in the village. The problem is the marketing combined with the execution of said twist. We went into this movie expecting to see creatures and expecting it to be cool and scary, but it wasn't. Not only were they barely in the movie, they're not real. The way Shyamalan chose to reveal that twist was in a sort of backlogging way, not in chronological order. In the film, Ivy's going into the woods, she knows they're not real because at this time her father has already told her these creatures don't exist, but we don't get that information until later. So in the film, when she has this showdown with Adrian Brody, who we don't know is Adrian Brody yet, she seems really scared. And this thing is making all these creature guttural noises that I don't really understand how Adrian Brody was able to create so well and yet she's terrified of it and we're supposed to be terrified of it but we've already been told the creatures aren't real so what the hell is going on here? He shouldn't have said the creatures were fake before seeing Adrian Brody in that suit. The revelation should have come after the mask is removed and Adrian Brody is laying in that pit and you realize that it's just him. Then go back in time to William Hurt talking about how the creatures aren't real. That way that suspense could have been maintained because when I saw this movie in theaters in 2004, I'll never forget, when she's having that showdown with Adrian Brody, I said to myself, please, maybe it's not true. Maybe there is a real creature. Maybe that's him. And then it disappointed me a second second time when it was Adrian Brody. So when you go back and watch the earlier scenes in the movie, like when the creatures are attacking the village and painting red on all of the doors, you see its mouth open, it's blurred out, but you see that mouth open a little bit and there's growling and grunting coming out of these things. Where are these sounds coming from? I'm not buying it. What The Sixth Sense and Unbreakable and Signs did so well was in retrospect, when you go back and rewatch the movie, everything that happens at the end still makes sense for the entire film. The village wasn't like that. The ending of the village cheated because there are sounds coming from the woods. Where are these sounds coming from? You wouldn't know unless you watched the deleted scenes in which Ivy finds all of these wind chime things, these wood instruments in which sounds are being created through the wind. In the actual film, it's brushed over so quickly with William Hurt going, We created those sounds. I know that in this scene, Shyamalan is trying to be a little more weary of too much exposition being thrown at our faces, but that's really all he can do. And that's one of the major reasons this twist with the creatures, I'm not even talking about the modern day thing yet, is a little iffy. It requires too much exposition to explain to the audience. With The Sixth Sense, we were able to understand that twist with him just looking at his hand and noticing that his ring is not there. In Unbreakable, the twist was also very easy to understand through just a few flashback images. In Signs, it's not really a twist, but you know, it's like a revelation of sorts and it all makes sense. The first twist in the village, I haven't even gotten into the second one yet, requires so much exposition to explain to the audience and to Ivy. And because of that, the twist doesn't really work. A twist shouldn't need all of that information. We should be able to put those pieces together on our own. The second twist is that they're in modern day times, as I said. Now this twist works a little bit better simply because it makes sense when you go back and rewatch the movie and everyone has talked about some sort of tragedy that's befell them or their family. You can understand how these people would become very bitter and it all works in that way. The issue is that when we find M. Night Shyamalan literally sitting in an office and this guard is trying to get some ladder and some medicine, Shyamalan's character is literally just explaining everything to the audience about how they had to stop playing from flying over the preserve and how hard that was for him. It was a very stressful time, he says. All of this exposition is given to us because he's afraid that we won't understand the twist unless he literally explains it out like a list. And that, in my opinion, watching it years later, is the weakest aspect of this movie, the way that he executes the twist. The acting in the movie, though, is really great. William Hurt does a terrific job in this movie, and Bryce Dallas Howard as a newcomer was extremely impressive, although she does overact a few times, particularly in this scene. <laughs> Rewatching this movie, I was surprised that Joaquin Phoenix's character doesn't really have that much screen time. And that's because the movie, in a way, is sort of in hiding for who its actual lead character is, similar to Psycho, a movie that clearly inspired M. Night Shyamalan a lot, because in Psycho, you are introduced to Janet Lee, you think she's a lead character, and then she gets stabbed, and you find out she's not the lead character. 
In The Village, you're introduced to Joaquin Phoenix. You think he's the lead character, and then he gets stabbed, and you find out that he's not the lead character, Bryce Dallas Howard is. Rewatching the film, I definitely saw those connections between Psycho, and this film handles it well because for the entire first half of the movie, it's actually a very sunny, light, very bright and warm looking environment, but as soon as Lucius gets stabbed, the movie literally turns almost into winter. Now I know that when they were shooting the movie, they had a terrible winter storm that affected their shooting schedule very badly, but it actually works thematically as well. Also the film sets up this mystery early on with these skinned animals everyone's finding around. You think it's significant, you think it has something to do with the plot, and later on in the film you just get this one little audio bit of Adrian Brody's mother and she goes, the animals! And that's it. Apparently Noah skinned all of these animals in his free time and threw them around the village to mess with people? I don't know. Like, that whole aspect of the movie and certain aspects of said story really don't work. There's also one other thing about this movie that's always bothered me. The film clearly depicts Lucius being stabbed multiple times. At least three or four times. You see two stabbings and then you see a shadow continually moving up and down. So at least three or four times this man was stabbed. And you want me to believe that whatever they have in this guard shack is enough to treat multiple stab wounds? But I want to be honest here. Rewatching The Village, this is not a terrible movie. This is certainly not a bad movie. There are certain aspects of the screenplay and certain aspects of the dialogue and the writing that do not work. It is a gorgeous looking movie though with amazing cinematography. A very beautiful love story that is cut too short because our hero that we're supposed to kind of care about about, you don't really care that much about him and you realize he's not the hero. Our actual hero is Ivy and she does a great job in the movie, Bryce Dallas Howard. She really does. Most of the acting in the movie is very good. The look of the film is beautiful. The sound design is immaculate and there are some true, genuine scenes of suspense. But that's really not what The Village is about. It's a love story. It's a romance. And in that aspect, the movie did a pretty good job with it. Rewatching the film, it mostly holds up. There are just aspects with the way those twists are executed in the filmmaking that didn't hold up. I'm gonna give The Village a B minus. Guys, what are your thoughts on The Village? Because it is a very divisive and polarizing movie. Some people love this movie and call it a masterpiece, and some people say it's one of the worst movies they've ever seen. I don't know why, because it's definitely not. Have you ever seen Dragon Ball Evolution? Seriously, have you seen Dragon Ball Evolution? You haven't? Well, go watch it, because it's far worse than The Village, trust me. Fuck Dragon Ball Evolution. Guys, my next and final film in my M. Night Shyamalan series is gonna be Lady in the Water. I'm excited to talk to you guys about that because it's the only film of his, after The Sixth Sense anyway, that I have not reviewed yet. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.